Have you got a squeaky clutch? Question mark? If so, the chances are it's this. So take a look and we'll show you how you can stop that squeaky clutch. pedal the usual reason is the plunger on the end of your clutch slave cylinder needs greasing it's it's just become worn over time and just needs some grease on there and that the action of that greasing should free it up and stop the squeaking it's not normally the pedal it's normally that clutch slave cylinder I'll show you it in a minute but the first thing we have to do is get to it so let's show you how we do that. So to get to it, what you've got to do is take the battery out and take the battery tray out. Now the battery, you've got the quick release, then you've got 10 mil nut on there and a 10 mil nut on there. Move your cables out of the way. You've got a 13 mil nut down there. If you've got one, I suggest you use a, a wrench, an electric wrench on that, because they do have a habit, as you can see, that one's a bit crusty and they do have a habit of breaking the uh, the stud that comes out that the nut goes onto they do have a habit of breaking if you do it with a power wrench if you've got one they're less likely to break so just be warned be careful get some WD-40 on there if you can and leave it a few minutes in fact I'm going to do that anyway because I don't think I've taken this one off on this car before and then we'll show you where this um, where it all is and we'll show you how to take out the battery tray as well let's just get the battery out and then we'll show you so first of all, we've just got some standard WD-40 and we're going to give it a good squirt. This is nearly an empty can, so <laughs> it's not upright. So it's, uh, here we go. Oh, I'm not even pointing at it. I need to get a new can. Right, that's some WD-40 on it. We'll let that soak for a few minutes and then we'll, uh, we'll get it undone. In the meantime, we will get uh, the connections off of the battery. So I'll quickly show you how to do that. Right, so please forgive me if this is teaching you how to suck eggs, but I'm trying to save people a lot of money from doing this. So people who haven't got a clue about how to do things on cars. It is a learning curve, but if I can show you how to do it, it will save you quite a bit of money. So to get the battery quick release off, you've got the, you have to press the button, the little red button on there, press it in and then it just pulls off. So that's just disconnecting your earth. And then you've got, if you've got a 10 mil ratchet spanner, they're the best things to use because you haven't got to keep going on and off. This one's actually quite loose. So you loosen that. No, don't bring it out, don't take it off all the way, just loosen it off, get that out of the way. Pull that out of the way and then you've got the same again down here. Now whoever put this on has done it so you can't get a spanner in there. So on this particular case, I'm gonna have to get the open-ended spanner on. And once we've undone it enough, we can then turn it like that and get the ring spanner on it. So we'll undo the same on that one. Don't take it all off, just loosen it up enough that you can then just wiggle it off like that. Okay, so then you've got the strap. So the strap is holding the battery in place. If your battery is not held like that, when you have your MOT, your car will fail the MOT because the battery is insecure. Okay, so what I've got here is a power wrench impact wrench with a 13 mil socket on the end. So let's just show you getting this off. So I'm doing this one-handed because I've, uh, I'm holding the camera over it. So there you go, 13 mil. Make sure it's on loosen rather than tighten. As you can hear, it's quite rusty, so it's gonna take a little bit of effort. Now if, that was, if you were doing that with a ordinary socket wrench on the end of here rather than the impact wrench, that's when you're putting sideways pressure on it and when you're likely to snap the stud. So hopefully this won't snap. There we go, it's coming now. And it's actually snapped. So even on this one, it's snapped. So this is gonna need some work doing on it. I'm gonna have to drill that out and then I'm gonna have to um, put in a nut and bolt. So even on this one, because it's so rusty, 
it has snapped. So that's what you're trying to avoid happening. So then you just lift out the strap out of the way, pull up the handle if, you have, if your battery's got one, and lift the battery out. And don't forget, batteries are heavy. What we have to do, you've got this little tray here, which has got a pipe in it. So you just lift that off. Move that out of the way. And then what we've got is a 13 mil bolt there, a 13 mil bolt there, and down there, if you can see it, is another 13 mil bolt. So we've got to get those three bolts out. So again, get your socket or your wrench. They shouldn't snap. I've never had one of these snap. They come out relatively easily. That's a nut on there, which has probably fallen in, but that's fine. Yeah, it's just sitting on the top. So we can just pull that off and then what we need to do is we need to release those cables on there and there because they're in the way they're, they're sort of securing the cables so all you need to do is just get a get a tool and prise them out so we'll, we'll just do that and then we'll take the tray out right so i've just released that clip pulled out that cable and then released this cable in two places at the back and now this will just lift away and while we drop <laughs> <laughs> while we drop the nuts and bolts on the floor it's because i'm doing this one-handed oh well, i just realized we've got another one there forgot about that one we've got another one to release there so i'll just release that we'll take the tray out and then i can show you what we're looking at right okay so here we have the bit that causes the squeak so i haven't touched it yet so i haven't put any lubrication on it yet so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get in the car i've actually propped the camera up so i'm hoping that it will stay propped and um, I can get in the car and show you that moving and then hopefully you'll hear the squeak in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my microphone off and I'm going to put my microphone down there so it'll pick it up let me try hopefully my camera won't fall off Okay, so what I'm going to do is get some grease. And the grease I'm going to use um, is a CV Lithium Molly grease. I'll show you the grease. It's that. So that's the sort of thing you put into CV joints. This is, seems to be, from what I can make out, is the best grease to use. It's for high temperature use. There's no high temperature here, of course. But as far as I can tell, it's, it's the best grease that I've used that seems to do this. So it is quite corroded. So it might even be worth getting a little bit of, so I've got some sandpaper here, just giving it a little rub. And see if we can get some of the, um, not corrosion so much it's just um yeah i don't know it's just a bit rough just a little bit that will help right i'm just going to get a cotton bud so i don't get grease all over my hands i'm going to get a cotton bud and put it on with that so what we need to do is spread it around don't want too much really and then hopefully when I go and pump the clutch again, it will help to spread that grease a bit. See if that's enough. Get a bit more underneath. Let's try it. I'll leave me, I'll put my microphone here again. So I'll pick it up, hopefully. still doing it so although I have greased it it's still doing it now does that mean that it's rather than it being that it's 
the actual pivot point. Could it be the pivot point? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some WD-40 on the pivot point of that bracket and see if that, because it might be that. Because obviously that moves as well. Maybe that needs lubricating. So let's go and pump it again. I'll leave the microphone there. So why is it still doing it? Let's put a bit of grease on that. A bit more on there. We'll put some on that as well. And then it's just a matter of keep trying, I think. Right, I figured out that the squeak, if I put my hand on that, I'm figured out I think it's this the slave cylinder so and I believe I've got one of these so I'm going to replace it I thought it was this but it's I, I'm not sure actually now yeah no I'm pretty sure it's that so I'm going to replace it and then see what happens right so because that didn't work what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the slave cylinder. I think it's coming from the slave cylinder. It could be the release bearing, the clutch release bearing, but I think that it's the slave cylinder. So what I'm going to do, there's a little trick. A lot of people who want to uh, or do replace their slave cylinders are worried about the join, which is down there somewhere. Can't see it from here. It's underneath the join of the two pipes. So this pipe goes out and then joins to a pipe that then joins onto the master cylinder, which is that one. Those are a nightmare. They always recommend if you change one to change the other. Now I've got one here, luckily, a slave cylinder. And I learned a little trick. And I'm gonna show you that little trick. Let me just put the uh, camera on a tripod and then we'll show you. Right, so the trick that I learned which I'll show you on the new one. Let me get the box out of the way. So, so this is the joint. Under, under this thing is the joint. So that pipe, so that sits on the car. Which way up does it go? That way up, isn't it? That way up? No, the other way up. That way up. No, that's not right. <laughs> Hang on. Oh no, because it's twisted. That's right. So it goes that way up. Okay, so, so you can see that it, it joins like that. And they, those things are a nightmare. As I say, they always, they always tell you to, to change both. But there's a trick. Just here is a little circlip, if you can see it. So what you can do, if you pull that circlip out, which I won't do for the second, you can remove that pipe. And then all you've got to do is replace that and put the... Um, take the other one out, do the same on that one, and then you use the original pipe work. You don't need to change this pipe work. That is an absolute top tip. Because they will always cause you a nightmare. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take the bolts out of the old one, uh, and I'm going to lift it out, and then I'm going to remove remove that on this. I'm not, I'll do it on this one afterwards, because this is the new one going in. This thing is connected here because you don't want the rod just shooting out because you get air in it. So what you do is once you get it in position, you then cut that, remove it, and then that just pushes out onto the lever. So let's do that. Let's, um, I'm gonna, just going to take it out. So we've got the two 13 mil bolts. We're just going to take out the, um, the old slave. I'll see if I can get the camera pointing down there. I don't think I can get it close enough to get it down there. Let's take that off. So these are only loose because if you've seen the other video, you would have seen that I removed this when I did the uh, earth strap. See, so once we've done this, we will have to bleed the clutch. Right, sorry about that. The, um, 
the battery ran out on the camera. So, as I was saying, um, we will have to uh, bleed the clutch a little bit. It won't, shouldn't be much, because if you can do a quick, a quick swap over, and these new ones, I think, I believe, have already got fluid in. So, right, we lift that out, take the entire thing out, like so, and then what we need to do is unclip. In fact, which one should we unclip first? If I unclip the new one first, so I've taken the taken the little clip out. Don't want to lose that. Let me just unzoom, and then that should just pull out. But it does, and we can see that there's fluid in there. So as long as we keep that upright, that fluid shouldn't leak. We won't get any air in there. So we need to do the same thing with this one. We can get the, my torch has just gone off. It's gonna be a little bit more gunged up this one. There it comes. We'll use the new clip, I think, rather than the old one. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> okay, just a final update on this. In, on this occasion, it didn't work. And this had to be replaced. So as we showed you yesterday, the tip on taking out that retaining clip, which was taken out, it was really corroded, so that had to be broken around it. Normally, that is your, that is your problem and the grease will sort it out. But on this particular instance, it wasn't, and it had to be changed. It's now been changed and was, uh, and the clutch is now been bled and it is nice and light, nice and smooth and no noise whatsoever. Um, so that's just the final update on that. Sorry I couldn't show you it, um, but I actually had to, because due to the weather uh, and having to get things done quickly for this car because I've got actually someone coming to look at this car, I wasn't able to do it myself today. I had to get my, um, my trusty mobile mechanic to come and do it for me. It took him about 40 minutes to do it and that was only because he had trouble getting that off. Um, but yeah, the, everything in this video still stands. Normally that lubrication will do the trick and it is definitely worth trying that because it could save you lots of money by having to get a mechanic to to do other things and because I've still got still got the pipe work off of the new one which I didn't need of course because we managed to do it by just changing the cylinder itself but if you've got a squeaky clutch try that first if that doesn't work then you know it's, it's not going to be the clutch it's going to be that uh, slave cylinder but hopefully this video has um, taught you something shown you what it might be and hopefully you'll be able to get some grease on it give the pedal a few pumps and it will take it away but as always thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed the video hope you've learned something from it hope it's been useful if you're not a subscriber please click on the button hit that subscribe button take a look at some of the other videos got lots of how-to videos lots of car projects including the one behind me as always thanks for watching until next time take care stay safe and we'll see you very soon